Good evening, everyone. Um, just thought we'd address an issue that uh, popped up while I was discussing uh, the topic of self-control uh, with a friend of mine who lives in the United Kingdom. And um, there is a little bit of a misconception concerning uh, the world's definition of self-control and, of course, uh, the definition that we get uh, in Scripture. So the first reference we have is when Paul was writing to Timothy. And we see that in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and of love and of self-discipline or self-control. And the Greek word used there is ekkratia, which means the virtue of one who by an intimate knowledge of Holy Spirit masters one's desires and passions and one's sensual appetites. Paul wrote to Timothy concerning self-control to overcome any fears that he might have had to step out and to activate his faith, activate his faith and to overcome any apprehensions he might have had uh, concerning the um, calling and destiny that was placed upon his life when Paul prayed for him and laid hands on him. So it's a very positive attribute. In, in not not uh, an attribute that actually wanted to curb him or hold him back or impose anything on him. It was to be released in Holy Spirit to ac accomplish his assignments. The other place where the word self-control is, of course, used is in Galatians 5 verse 22, where um, Paul wrote to the Galatians concerning the fruit of the Spirit. And there the word is used is sophrinosmos as a fruit of the Holy Spirit, and which is slightly different from uh, the context in which it was used when he wrote to Timothy. But as a fruit, it is the virtue or characteristic of one who masters his or her d desires and passions by allowing Holy Spirit to manifest himself fully in their lives. And this whole idea of godliness and reflecting who Holy Spirit is in our lives is further borne out in 2 Peter 1 verse 47, where we read that because of God's glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. And these are the promises that enable us to share in his divine nature, to become like him and to escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. In view of all this, and that's important, in view of the fact that we are partakers of the divine nature, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a general provision of moral excellence and with moral excellence add knowledge and to knowledge add self-control and to self-control patient endurance and to patient endurance godliness and to godliness brotherly affection and to brotherly affection add love for everyone. So both kinds of self-control entails the Holy Spirit's involvement. It's not about you, it's about involving Holy Spirit to bring about that change that will enable you to have the self-control that God had ordained through Holy Spirit to be in you. Okay, so both are important for godly living and godly character and, and for your identity to be captured in Him. And Proverbs, of course, is, is the book where the mind of God is, is explained. So when he talks about the fool or foolishness, it relates to people who, for a moment, or as a lifestyle, disregard God's way of thinking. That makes you a fool or foolish. So Proverbs affirms this principle of a lack of self-control as one who disregards the Lord and his ability to help him to see things from God's mind and to handle things from God's perspective. So what we must do, first of all, in trying to attain to godly self-control is to understand this difference between free will and making right choices and choosing to do something that is right. So obviously, um, it is a, it, it, you know, it's our decision to, abs to, to choose to do the right thing. And if we choose to do the right thing in terms of gosh, um, suppress our feelings, thoughts, and identity for the sake of what we believe is the right thing, that is following a sound principle as with the law, we'll still experience uh, good results because we're actually doing you know, things from a, uh, 
a legalistically good point, you know, or point of view. Uh, but that's not inwardly. So uh, we will experience good results, but with no inward godly change. And legalism always looks good on the outside, but our aim is godliness. And the prize is to be like God and Holy Spirit to have his way in and through our life. And the new covenant is about change, a change of heart, that his laws will be written on our hearts and that his fruit will be born in and through our lives. Which is why both aspects of New Testament self-control has to involve a very, very intimate relationship, personal relationship with Holy Spirit. So how do you gain more self-control from that perspective? Understanding now that there is a big difference between what we usually take as meaning self-control and what scripture calls self-control. Well, the key is prudence. And prudence in Old Testament terms is, is that ability to take a step back from any issue or person or circumstance and to first engage with God before reacting or making any decisions and asking Holy Spirit for the grace to be Holy Spirit in you and through you. In other words, Holy Spirit, you've got to come and give me grace, take over, your will be done. Understanding the difference between these concepts is, a first, is the first most important step forward so that you don't try and do it in your own strength, but that you know that it needs to be a change from inside out, that it be, needs to become out of that relationship. The fruit of that relationship will become a lifestyle change, will become an identity change. So if you lack self-control, the place to go is the place where it's freely given. In the presence of Father God, when we come to Father God and we say, Father God, we really need to have more self-control in our life. Please, we ask for Holy Spirit, just like in Luke 11, ask for Holy Spirit and He will freely give us what we need. need. Another key is not to grieve Holy Spirit and the other one is not to quench Him. So to grieve Him is to disregard Him totally. And to quench him is actually knowing what you should be doing and, and you just won't allow him to have his way. So would you like some more self-control? Allow Holy Spirit to be Holy Spirit in your life. Soak in his presence. Allow him to change you inside out. Let him have full reign in, of, uh, in your life. Let him have full reign in, the, in love. But also give him the ability to be who he is in and through you. And self-control will then spontaneously, in a beautiful way, manifest in your life like never before. Bless you guys. All the best. And thank you for listening. And may the anointing of Holy Spirit, as you've listened to this, convict you, but also fill you and empower you to be the people that He has called you to be. Blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.